So now you know where and how to press your finger against the fretboard just near the fret and give the note some sustain. And now you want to give your notes some character and personality, make them your own. We can do that in a few ways. One thing is you can always slide into the note. So now when you slide into your note, all you have to think about is where you want to land. Don't think about where you start the slide, think about where you want to land, where you want to end up. Another way of giving your notes a little more personality is by tapping into them. And again, you think about the tap, you think about where you land on your finger, you kind of hammer it down. Or you can pull it off. So tap into your note, pull it off, or tap and pull it off. And you've noticed that I'm vibrating my notes. Another thing you want to add to your notes is a vibrato. Now when you vibrate your note, it's kind of like minute little movements up and down, which kind of like stretch and release and stretch and release your notes a little bit, a tiny bit. And that you do by just like twisting your whole hand while you hold your finger tight on the note and you twist your whole hand. You can even move your whole guitar neck if you want to give it a nice, if you want to give it a nice vibrato. When you do it on a classical guitar, you kind of move, and move this way, but that's why I'm using an acoustic or an electric guitar because then your movement is up and down, like this. A good exercise for that is just to catch each note with each finger and vibrate it, even with your pinky. This is a good exercise to learn how to vibrate your notes, how to give them nice vibrato. Another thing I like to do sometimes is comb the strings down while they're muted, like this. But I'm holding my note here, and then I have... Or just comb them down. Now there's bending and stretching your string to make it tighter and to uh, make it the note kind of like slowly climb smoothly into a higher note. And that you do in uh, some guitars, just do it with one finger, like Eric Clapton just does it like this. I do it with one finger when I use the first finger because I have no fingers before it. When I want to bend this note, for example, I would hold all three fingers on the string and together they are pulling the string up. Now usually the bend is just one tone. And this is the exercise, you just, you just check what the full tone is sounds like, and then you bend it up. You can bend even a tone and a half. Or just usually a full tone. Sometimes you bend only a half a tone. Now what I personally do, because I like bending my strings so much, is I fit my acoustic guitar with thicker gauge electric guitar strings. The reason is because I really like to bend my string G. And the 
string G on acoustic guitar strings is like a rap string, like a bass string, and those are a little harder to bend. But these steel strings, like the treble strings at the bottom, are easier to bend. And on the electric guitar, the string G is also just a regular steel string. So I fit my acoustic guitar with thicker gauge electric guitar strings. Now thicker strings because this is an acoustic guitar after all and it doesn't have more amplification than just the guitar body. Sometimes it's connected, sometimes it's not, but I use 0.11 strings instead of a 0.9 that I use here or a 0.10 that I use on my Les Paul. Thicker gauge electric guitar strings on my acoustic. A good way to check yourself, you remember when you when you uh, tune your guitar classically, you hold your string at the fifth fret and then check out the next string that it sounds the same. If this is the fret I'm holding and I want to bend it a full tone higher, then it becomes five frets away from this tone here. So I can just check. And there's a lot of uh, and there's a lot of sequences where you just where you just bend the one note and go or here. Or with two notes. Here with one finger with the first finger. I also with the index finger, I also bend a full tone. And when you bend, you can also add the vibrato at the top of your bend. Or here. Gives you a lot of personality and character to the notes you play. Now what I do here is I bend it just using two fingers because I want to use the third finger to mute all the rest of the strings. So I can go... Now another way is just using a part of a chord to... So you have the chord leading to a note. Or have the chord lead to even a bent note. You can have a note lead to a chord. Or you can just strum octaves. You remember the octaves, these octaves that we used to play? So it's also a note with a lot of character and a lot of robustness and thickness because it's an octave of actually two of the same note. It's a unison. And of course there are the riffs that we hear in many songs. Got a good reason for taking the easy way out. Got a good reason for taking the easy way out now. She was a poor. My mama said that your life is a gift And my mama said there is much weight you will lift And my mama 
said, leave those bad boys alone. And my mama said, be home before the dawn. So we have taps, we have pull-offs. Or we have bends. Gives us many opportunities to create interesting musical phrases full of character and personality. Vibrate them, tap them, pull them off, and combinations that create interesting musical phrases. So we have the slides. Taps and pull-ups. We have many bands. And we have the chords leading to the phrase. can call muted muted strings and strum in the octaves. Make up your own little phrasing and sequencing using these bands vibratos and just like playing little chords with the pull-off 